So I want to take a minute and just show the create line string command in Business Center. It's, uh, I think once you understand this, it really plays into a lot of the other commands in Business Center of how to use the software. The create line string is pretty powerful and it can do a whole lot. Um, so when you start the command, you get the first dialog box that pops up. It wants the name of the object. It's optional, but it's recommended. That way when you send this out for field and for stakeout, you can actually select the name of the object and it plays into reports and other stuff. Go ahead and set it on a layer so you can identify where it's at. You can control the line style and the line a scale and even the color if you want from here. We're going to just leave those the way they are and click OK. So here's where you really get into creating the line string itself. Now, you know, a lot of times other CAD applications, what have you, they you know, have a command line and it's got some prompts and some, com some commands. So here's where you kind of get to everything. A couple things just to point out, um, shows you the name of the line string. Up top, you can get into some of the commands. So you, it actually gives you and prompts you for other tools like reversing the line string. And you're going to see this, even though it says edit line string, I'm actually creating the line string, but the same tools will show up if you are editing an existing line string in the software. And any object, any line, pretty much any line in Business Center, like a, uh, if it starts out as a 2D polyline or a CAD line, can be converted into a line string uh, just by selecting it and going into edit the line string. The first tab you see here is a horizontal tab, um, or before, above that you got the auto close. So as, as I, sh I'll show you this as I close this object. But what are now right now you want to pay attention to what's going on here. There's a lot of buttons in here that are overlooked sometimes. Uh, first of all, if you came down here, you can either pick a coordinate, type in an X, Y, northing, easting, uh, or you can just change it to a point ID. So if you had actually had survey points in your drawing, you could actually just use those points and you know draw to those uh, points. So for example. If I switch it to point ID and I put, you know, 1000 and then uh, just enter and it's going to draw. You can see it's starting to draw from there. It picks up the elevation and then it goes to the next point. So if I say 1001 uh, and enter, it goes to the, that point right there. So I want to create a new one. I don't have to get out of this. I don't have to exit. All I do is come up here and I go ahead and tell it to create a new line string. Leaves that one the way it is. It asks for the name of it again um, and the layer. So I'm just going to click OK to that and leaves that one there. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start drawing another line string. So I'm going to start with a coordinate. And you can see, you can, I'll show you what these buttons here do in a minute. But I'm going to start with a coordinate. I'm actually just going to pick on the end of that line right there. So I'm going to left click there. And you can see it grabs the elevation of that line string. Once you're in there, notice that now I have a vertical tab. So I could come over here and I can add in vertical PVIs um, or horizontal. So I'm going to stick with horizontal for a moment. I can then come down here and you can see I'm adding to a new segment. So my cursor and line string is being shown that. So if I was to come up here and let's say I, I pick a point right here, you'll notice that my segment type was straight. So I drew a straight line. Now the elevation is just being held as 100 because I didn't define or tell it what that elevation should be. So next, I'm going to come over You're going to, uh, and change this. So I'm actually going to put in the next point, and it's going to ask me how do, you, how do I want to get there. Well, I can put in a smooth curve. If I use the smooth curve option, it asks me for a coordinate. So as I pick points, it will draw in a uh, smooth curve. So if I was to pick a point here, pick a point here, you can see it's smoothing uh, that curve. If I undo, it backs itself out. Now, when I do that, I automatically go into the edit mode so you see this glyph here so what I need to do if I want to keep adding points is I need to switch it back to add after last segment you can also see that I can insert before current segment if I wanted to put in a an additional vertex in there so I'm just going to undo that I could also use this tool to actually remove that segment but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to append so I'm going to add after the last segment so I'm going back into the adding mode and I'm going to switch over to just a, uh, I can do a best fit arc. Um, so as you pick points, it best fits the arc through there. I can do a regular arc, I can do a tangent arc, I can do a flexion, I can do a P PI arc. So a lot of different arc, arc options. I'm just going to do an arc with a radius of, let's say, 200. It asked me for left or right. I'm not really quite sure, I think, which way I'm going with this. So what I'm going to do is when I pick in a coordinate, you can see that my arc is actually going in the opposite direction that I want it to. So I'm just going to switch it back over to right, and when I pick in the coordinate, now you can see it's actually going in the direction that I want. 
So if I was to come down here and I want to put a point in right here, for example, and I want that elevation maybe to be 105, I type in the elevation first, set the coordinate, and I just come over here and I pick that point there. So it added that elevation 105, it interpolated that elevation holding the elevation here and there. So I could just pick here, but I'm going to click auto close, and it's going to close that object. So now that I've closed the object, it goes back into an edit mode. So if I switch over to vertical, you can see that I can actually add in a vertical information, some vertical information, and I'll switch back to horizontal. I'm going to adjust this arc. So right now, the orange showing is highlighted, shows me the information for that arc. So if I want to change this radius, I can go ahead and do that and change it and it adjusts the arc so it's dynamically linked to that. If I want to change this point you can see that the elevation is question mark the coordinate is that location so I left click once to kind of highlight that line if I left click again it's going to let me change the coordinate so see how it changed the coordinate here All right so I could actually come in and you know pick a new coordinate for that. The elevation if I back into this mode and I, and I click on elevation here I could come in here and I could set that elevation as well. So I can save that. Now, a couple things before I show you the vertical. There's a couple buttons up here that let me use these arrows to kind of work my way through the line segment. I can also come and pick this browse button and it actually will show me the lengths of those segments. If I switch over to vertical, I do the same thing as I can toggle through there's, um, I'm actually, it's adding a new PVI. Uh, if I click in here, you can see it shows the vertical information. So it's showing the slope around uh, my object, the three different lengths, okay? So if I add in a PVI, I'm gonna first put the uh, distance. Notice that it rubber bands. So let's say I wanna put a higher low spot out here. I'm gonna click there, it sets the elevation, or the distance, let's make it 210 just for that and then for the elevation let's make it 108 so when we save that you can see that it puts in a PVI so that's a vertical uh, uh, intersection or basically just it's straight grade up straight grade down if I come over here you can see that it's showing uh, no curve type the incoming slope the outgoing slope so what I could do if I wanted to if I cancel out of this because asking um, to add in a new uh, point so I'm going to cancel that you can see that it's editing this information and I can change that and this is something I it's fairly new to the software which is pretty cool is I can actually add an arc or a parabolic arc let's say I add in a hundred foot length and save it now what it's done it's actually put in a vertical curve from this point through that point down to that point so it's put in a basically what I did was I put a PVI in there so if I look at the vertical information you can see that I've got a parabolic curve my incoming slope, my outgoing slope. So a really powerful 3D line that I can use for surfaces or other information. If I was to do this as a straight line segment, it would be my horizontal and vertical profile of a road that I can easily turn into an alignment and then into a corridor. But from a site aspect of it, this tool right here, just by working with this and understanding the buttons that you see here, you can quickly edit and manipulate this object. So if I want to change the starting point elevation from 100 and I want to maybe bump it up to 105, I can go ahead and save that. I've only edited and adjusted that point. I can come over here and do the same thing. I'm going to make that 108. And if I want to go to vertical, I switch to vertical and now I'm into that information there and editing the vertical. I can add in more. So if I was to come in and either remove or add a vertical PVI, I could come in and pick a point um, let's just go no curve distance along and you can see that it's rubber banding so wherever I snap I could come in here and put a point so I don't need one at the vertices because I already got one there but if I added one here I'm gonna make this 120 just so you can see it you can see how it changes over there and then if I wanted to get rid of that I'm just canceling out of that it's highlighted I delete it and away it goes so that's editing a line string, creating a line string in Business Center Heavy Civil Edition. You can download the software and use this actually functionality for free uh, as part of the core module. So uh, check it out.